Hi, everyone. Welcome to the fifth edition of the Kinetics Book Challenge. I'm João, and I co-organize this workshop together with Lucas, Jean-Baptiste, Antoine, Adria, Carl, Andrew, and our activity Net colleagues. First of all, for those of you uh, who are not familiar with the Kinetics Challenge, it is about developing more advanced architectures and techniques for dealing with videos. For this, we have collected hundreds of thousands of YouTube videos and annotated each of them with a single most dominant human action present in them. For example, here are shown videos with tickling, dancing Charleston, playing beer pong, and bending back. Our list of 700 classes is wide ranging and includes also giving or receiving awards, uh, lawn mower racing, hopscotch, and pushing car. There is a wide variety of scenes, indoors and outdoors, camera motions from static all the way to very shaky, clothing, body shapes, objects, number of people, etc. This is the fifth edition of the challenge. We have collected additional videos each year. Initially, we enlarged the number of classes and clips from 400 classes and 250,000 training examples in the first year to 600 classes and 400K training examples in the second year until 700 classes and 50, uh, 550K examples in the third year. This year, we used the Kinetic 720 data set for the first time, which mainly balances out the classes. All have at least 700 examples. Details about each of these data sets, how they were collected, number of examples, list of classes, baselines, etc., can be found on archive. Kinetics has had a tremendous impact. Dozens of new architectures have been developed and, and tested using the Kinetics data which led to large improvements in most downstream tasks, such as uh, UCF-101 and HMDB-51, charades, AVA, ActivityNet, etc. This year has seen the rise of transformer-based architectures, which ha have also had impact in this challenge, as we will hear about later. Before we delve into the details of this year's Kinetics Challenge, just a little bit of publicity about the AVA Kinetics Challenge, which, which focuses on the difficult task of spatiotemporal action localization. It is part of the ActivityNet workshop today, and I encourage everyone to check it out. All right, so uh, regarding this year's Kinetics Challenge, for the first time, we created our own evaluation server using the eval.ai platform. This server will stay open indefinitely for people to evaluate their models and showcase them in a public leaderboard. We switched to a custom evaluation system because we introduced some novelties this year. Uh, Particularly this year, users uploaded 512 dimensional factors for all Kinetics videos, instead of just class scores for test videos in previous editions. Given these features, we then train a linear classifier ourselves and evaluate performance. The motivation to switch to this system was to be able to do richer analysis and the robustness testing, which we have just started since the challenge finished recently. More on that will probably come in a later technical report. This year, we also trialed the self-supervised task beside the standard supervised one. And uh, we used the new Kinetic 720 data set. Uh, for the first time as well, we used data that has been made available in CVTF, where videos do not disappear over time, and hence all participants were able to train and evaluate on exactly the same set of videos, no matter where they were geographically located and how early they started working on the challenge, which were issues in previous years. Let us start by describing this year's dataset. The Kinetic 72020 dataset is composed of up to 10 second clips from unique YouTube videos. Each one of them has been annotated with a single label. In total, we have currently 700 human actions with at least 700 examples. There are train, validation, and test splits. And the test labels have not been made available and are only accessible throughout uh, our evaluation server. For the supervised track, participants could only train on kinetics data as well as use ImageNet train checkpoints. They could train their models on train and validation sets. For our, our self-supervised task, we decided to create an extra split into seen and unseen classes in an adversarial way by clustering in text space the action names in two, uh, into two unbalanced groups. For the self-supervised task, participants were allowed only to train on scene classes and were evaluated on unseen classes. The idea was to measure generalization the types of videos the model had not been exposed during training. We had many entries from many teams for both supervised and self-supervised tasks. 
However, many of them were private and most were anonymous. We will only mention the public entries. One thing we noted from the top methods is that many of them now incorporate auto transformers. And uh, without further, further ado, let us announce the challenge results. For first place, we have team ByteDance and CMU, composed of uh, Kai Hu, Gao Peng, Jia Jun Tang, Li Jun Yu, Yi Jun Qian, Wen He Li, Mario Savides, Alexander Hauptmann, Biksha Raj, and Ji Sha. Many congratulations to them, and I'm really disappointed I can't deliver their prizes personally again this year. We will hear a talk from this team later on in this session. On the self-supervised task, the, the, the winner was a team from Nanjing University and Tencent AI Lab with Zhang Tong, Tian Ha Li, Yi Bing Song, Yan Yu Yang, Zhu Yang Wang, and Li Min Wang. Congrat congratulations to them as well. Here are the top one scores from the top teams in the supervised track. ByteDance and CMU team got 1% higher performance than Visni and 2% higher than the Deep Video team. There are many other strong entries near or above 70%, which is quite impressive. For the self-supervised task, there was only one public participant that got 67 top one accuracy on unseen uh, classes. This team was best over all private entries as well, though. So it's quite a strong uh, participant. Since we have features for training and test sets this year, we did some pre preliminary analysis of robustness and some visualization. The challenge is use linear classification, but what if it had used one nearest neighbor uh, as classifier instead? We tried this and actually there would be some change to the ranking of the top three. The second and third ranked teams would be first and second instead. We plan to expand this analysis to a wider set of conditions and classifiers in the future. We can also try to visualize what the nearest neighbors look like to get a better feeling for how strong the current models are. In this case, for the winning ByteDance and CMU entry. Here we show first the videos which have the most confident, um, let me play it again, closest nearest neighbors. And that resulted in a correct classification in this case. On the left, we show the test video and on the right, we show the nearest neighbor training video. The ground truth classes are shown below. Here again, we show two videos with the most confident nearest neighbors, and that resulted in a, in a correct classification, in this case, uh, silent disco videos. And one more high confidence correct prediction, in this case, for stacking cups. Now we show videos with high confidence nearest neighbors, but incorrect. Here the test videos show snorkeling, whereas the nearest neighbor shows a scuba, scuba diving. Note that both videos are quite similar. They show the, just the seabed for much of the time. So the, the confusion is, is natural. Another high confidence video with the nearest neighbor from a different class is shown here. Note that the difference is very subtle and the knives on the left are hard to recognize, but they are indeed knives, whereas on the right side, there, there's an ax. So it's a different class, it's throwing ax instead of throwing knives. A final high confidence wrong nearest neighbor is shown here, but it is actually not wrong as I'll show you now. So on the left, the, the video is tagged as skydiving, although it is actually paragliding. And on the right, it's uh, paragliding. So this is a, the problem is not the classifier here. The problem was the ground truth label that was, that was wrong. We observe that many of the wrong and high confidence nearest neighbor actually are due to noisy annotations.
Now we sh switch to showing the videos having least confident nearest neighbors, starting with those that are nevertheless correct. Here are two videos of people arguing. And um, here are two videos of people looking at themselves in mirrors. It's quite a nice result here that the, the model managed to recognize this correctly. It's quite subtle. And here are two videos of feeding birds. Note that both focus on baby birds, which is interesting. And now perhaps the most interesting set of videos, those that show low confidence, wrong nearest neighbors. This may highlight where the models still struggle. The first example, the test video shows playing maracas and the, the, the nearest neighbor shows catching fish, which are quite different. But that, I guess they may have some similar motion, perhaps that's the source of the confusion. Uh, this video shows collecting garbage, uh, but the nearest neighbor shows bending metal. Another clear misclassification. And the test video here shows training dog, whereas the nearest neighbor shows tiptoeing. Perhaps here because the pants in both videos are similar, hence the confusion. This is a very difficult example. The test video shows a kind of a pool, but people are using, to, uh, are using it to make a giant bubble. The nearest neighbor is a video of someone cleaning a pool instead. So it's just a, a diff difficult classification, really. And finally, in this video, mirror of the sound. Uh, the nearest neighbor of a cutting cake video is a barbecuing video. It is a clear mistake. So on the left, uh, it's cutting cake. And then on the right, it's a barbecue, some kind of corn or carrots. Uh, overall, we can say that we had very strong entries this year. The 77% result of the winners of the supervised task is a very good number, far beyond the original I3D baseline that had 59%. Uh, one approach most teams seem to have taken is to assemble many different models together, especially ones pre-trained on ImageNet. While this is something that is clearly helping, it is something we would like to avoid as it may stifle uh, innovation. In the future, we will not replenish the data set further since the data has been made available in CVDF. This was probably also the last kinetics classification challenge. We plan to change the focus to a more multitask and multimodal setting with richer annotations next year. Uh, and that's it for me. Let's hear it from the co-winners of the challenge, the, the winners of the supervised task first, and then the winners of the self-supervised task, starting now with Kai Ho. Thank you. Hello everyone, this is Kai Hu. I am very glad to share our submission for the Kinect 700 challenge at ActivityNet 2021. This is a teamwork from ByteDance and Carnegie Mellon University. This talk includes three parts. Firstly, we will have a quick introduction to the dataset and our self-defined labels. Next, we will talk about the models used for our submission. Finally, we would like to discuss how to ensemble these models, which is less discussed in previous year's submissions. The Kinetic 700 2020 dataset includes videos in 700 classes. Each video is labeled in only one category. Many categories are actually related and sometimes difficult to classify 
from each other. For example, driving car and the steering car are two classes that even human needs some attention to classify. Most videos in the datasets are 10 seconds, but the ground truth action may occur at any time in the video, not necessarily in the entire video. For instance, many videos of playing cards have only a short period strongly related to the ground truth. Kinetics is a large scale video that I set from YouTube. So data download, storage, and processing are all challenges. For example, we faced a data problem during the challenge. Check this issue to see if you have the same problem. Since many categories are related, regarding them as one hot labels, we lose the semantic information. We self-define some binary labels based on the semantic information. For example, one binary label could be basketball related. Videos from the listed four categories are labeled as one, while other videos are labeled as zero. The rules of the self-defined labels are completely subjective instead of from some machine learning models. Three of our models are trained with both cross entropy loss and the binary loss, making these models more different from other models. Thus, they can provide more improvement from model ensemble. We manually define about 800 binary labels, covering about 550 original classes. Some binary labels can be a subset of another binary label. For example, basketball related and playing some sports. Here are some examples. Now we talk about the models used. The first model we use is the slow fast network. This network contains two branches. The slow branch is a heavy network with a sparse sample rate, which could extract the appearance information. The fast branch is a light network with high temporal resolution so that fast motion can be learned. The features of the two branches are laterally fused. The second model we use is the X3D network. It progressively expands a 2D image architecture along, along multiple network axes, such as temporal duration, frame rate, spatial resolution, photo width, and uh, depth. The special thing is that the network uses extremely small network width, making this model's features different enough from other models. The third model is Timeformer, a convolution-free architecture that is entirely based on self-attention over space and time. Timeformer applies the transformer architecture to the video learning directly from a sequential of frame-level features. Another good thing is that a pre-training model of 20, ImageNet 21K is available, which may bring good generalization abilities to the kinetics challenge. The implementation details of the first three models are all following from the official codes. Next, we use 2D models. Google's solution in the last year's challenge inspire us that 2D models are still significant for the Kinetic 700 dataset. We use a strong 2D backbone, ResNet 200 from PyTorch Hub to extract frame level features and average them for the final classification. We also use the SC attention module in both channel and time dimension for temporal modeling in every other bottleneck blocks. We also explore the self-supervised model. We first train a 2D self-supervised model. The idea is from face recognition. We regard each video as one class. So there are 540,000 classes for the train set. We use ArcFace, a strong loss function for face recognition to train this model. This will push features of different videos away from each other. 
Next, we inflate the 2D model to a 3D model and continue training in the same CR approach. This model is originally for the self-supervised track. However, we face the aforementioned data problem and need to retrain our models. Due to the time limit, we gave up the self-supervised track and fine-tune this model with the ground truth labels. Finally, we use more modalities. We trained two optical flow models. The first one is TVL1 flow model with a slow, fast, one-to-one -one backbone. However, this model's performance is lower than expected. So we also trained a two-string model. The RGB string is initialized with the mentioned RASNES 200 network. The flow string is a I3D RASNES 50 model that takes web faults. We choose this model simply because we have some experience in previous CS challenges. Our audio model is the same as the CUHK since time submission in the last year's challenge that takes male spectrum as input. However, our results are lower than theirs, maybe due to some implementation detail difference. Finally, we discussed how we ensemble these models. We use the final outputs of the classification layers as the features. For training videos, we sample 32 clips, extract the clip features, and take the average. For the validation and test videos, we extract 96 clips features and apply a top 64 average pooling. For model fusion, we use a weighted summation of different models features. The weights are learned to minimize the validation loss in a cross-validation manner over five splits of the validation datasets. For the fusion of RGB models, we find that the weighted summation over the softmax outputs is better than the summation over the logits. By default, the weights are scalars. In other words, one model uses a single number as a weight. However, this is not the case for audio models and optical flow models. Audio models' performance is much lower than the RGB models. However, it can be better in some categories. Thus, a uh, category-wise weight is better than a single weight. That is to say, different categories have different weights for the audio model. The optical flow models are the same. We can find that the categories with larger audio weights are strongly related with sounds and the categories with larger flow weights are strongly related with the fast motion. After we get the final 700 dimension features, we apply a SVD on the training features to get a down sample projection from the 700 dimension to the 512 dimension. The same projection is used for validation and test features. We find that applying the SVD on the softmax outputs will lead to a performance drop, while applying the SVD on the logics with a prop Location can slightly improve the performance. This table shows all of our models. We list the input modality, training input size, and top one accuracy on the validation dataset. Some models' results are lower than the final performance. We fine tune these models on the correct data after we realize the data problem. The ensemble accuracy on validation dataset is 77.7. .7. The projection to the 512 dimension does not decrease the accuracy. The test accuracy is 76.6. That is all. Thank you. Hello, everyone. We are the team NJU MCG and Tencent Air Lab from Nanjing University and Tencent Air Lab. We would like to thank ActiveNet workshop organizer 
and the Fnatic 700 challenge tough or neither, for given the chance to present our solution of the self-supervised truck. Firstly, I will briefly introduce the dataset of the challenge. The dataset for this challenge is Kinetic 700 2020 version. It is a trimmed video classification dataset that every single training sample lasts around 10 seconds and belongs to one of the predefined 700 classes. We refer to interested audience to the paper cited below. It is actually not all videos can be downloaded now, so we list the sample number we use for the challenge here. For the first edition of the self-supervised track, the dataset is additionally split into two sets of classes, the thin classes and the unseen classes. The idea is to train the model on a set of videos depicting a given set of classes, but evaluate how well the representations generalized on a different set of classes. Then, the model is only allowed to be trained on the training and validation set of the same classes without using any human annotations. Finally, a linear classifier is trained to evaluate the feature representation of the pre-trained models on both thin classes and unseen classes. Here, we give more detail on the pipeline of this self-supervised task. We firstly train on the training set of the thin classes and use the validation set to adjust the hyperparameters of the model. Then we use the training and the validation set of the thin classes to train the final model. Finally, we compute the features on videos in the whole dataset and upload them to the challenge website. The linear classifier will be trained separately on both thin classes and unseen classes to evaluate the feature representation. Now we introduce our solution to the self-supervised task of the challenge. We explore the use of the poor transformer-based models for video understanding, which is termed as factorized video transformer. Our STV uses what is as close as possible to a vanilla transformer encoder, like the one used in BERT, and the input of the BERT encoder is a sequence of word embeddings. So we split the image into a grid of 16 by 16 pixel patches to turn an image into a sequence of embeddings, and then linearly project those patches into a sequence of embeddings. As the order of the patches is lost, so as is popular in NLP, the position embedding is added such that the model can learn the location of the patches. In order to perform self-supervised learning, an externable classification token is added to the sequence, whose state at the output of the VIT encoder serves as the image and the video representation. Then the embeddings are fed into a standard transformer encoder and again. We modify the vanilla image model by inserting a temporal encoder after every three spatial encoder in vision transformer model like VIT small and VIT base. We use the recently self-supervised learning method DINO to train our transformer-based model. DINO works by interpreting self-supervision as a special case of self-distillation where no labels are used during training phase. We train a student network by simply matching the output of a teacher network over different views of the same input. Specifically, the student and teacher networks have the same architecture but different parameters, and the model is composed of a backbone and a projection head, which consists of a three-layer MLP with head and dimension 2048 followed by an L2 norm and a width normalized MLP with 65,566 dimensions. 
The similarity of student and teacher networks is measured with a cross-entropy loss. Stop gradient operator centering and shepherding are also added on the teacher model to avoid the training color base. For more detail about Dino, we refer the interested audience to the original Dino paper. After the self-supervised learning phase, we use the pre-trained model to extract features of the training, validation, and testing phase. We also want to remind that the features submitted for evaluation are only the output of the backbone. For every single video, we uniformly sample 10 clips and take three special clocks for every clip. Finally, we average the feature of all the 30 views for every single video. To get better feature representation, we ensemble the feature from four different models. We conduct the unsupervised dimensionality reduction algorithm principal component analysis to reduce the feature dimension extracted by every model and concat the feature from all the components to get the finally 512 dimension feature. Here, we report the configuration of different models. We use our modification version of the original VIT, FVT small and FVT base. We also use different number of frames per clip to capture different temporal information. We submit the ensembled feature of the whole dataset and get the best performance on both thin classes and unseen classes. Thanks for your attention and we are happy to answer any questions you may have.